Well, it, in in a way, it makes me proud to be an American because that's what America is all about: people airing their grievances, and we work it out together. At the same time, you know, it, it's not probably the best you know way to do it because at the end of the day, what, what do they hope to accomplish? What what is their agenda? And I think that is kind of shared by America. Nobody really has a solution, but everybody's upset of what's going on. So I think that's good in a way because it brings it to a head. We can all talk about it and find a way to solve it. So hopefully this will cause positive change. As a Wall Street warrior, how do you interpret this Occupy Wall Street protesting? I think it was long to be expected because of the economic decline that has been in the pipeline since 2007. It's the latest for everybody to see 2008, and it was clear that if the economy weakened to the extent that it did, uh, because this was a development that has been in the pipeline for 30 years, so the that the, the fact that the ramifications would be quite profound was also clear. Then who suffers? Uh, jobs suffer. There hasn't been any job growth. There's no job engine. A large number of college graduates don't find a job within the first year after graduating college. So I don't think it comes as a surprise. I think the government is prepared. I think the media under reports it a little bit because it doesn't want to fuel the fire. But I think people have a, it's, it's understandable that they protest, they have a good reason to, and there are many grievances as is reflected in the diverse pool of protesters. Mm. Americans have a, a different mentality, a different ideology. They think that largely what they're responsible for the life that they have and uh, anything is possible. That's the way that they have grown up. So in case of doubt, if, if an American is out of work, they will try to look for the reasons within themselves. And they will say, oh, if I had been more industrious, if I got more education, if this and that and the other thing, then I would be successful. They don't have an inclination to blame other people for their bad luck, as, for instance, Europeans are more inclined to point to the top and say it's their fault. So I think that's why it's taken a long time for them to come together and actually say, well, maybe it's not our fault. We did go to a great college. We are very willing and able to work, but there are just no jobs. And this is not just a quarter or a year. This seems to be a long-term trend. Mm. Okay, last one is a very open-ended question. You can say whatever you, you like. Uh, America is a country for the 1% or for the 99%. I don't think it's a conspiracy of government teaming up with Wall Street. It's not that well thought through. It's a systemic uh, misalignment. It's the system as such that doesn't work. Obviously, just supporting the financial industry doesn't automatically create jobs. So there is a misalignment that needs to be corrected. Tamakani 但是到最后如果他们真的把华尔街给打垮了必然的一个结果会使得美国社会的总体这个金融服务的供给量会下降的因为简单的说你把很多的华尔街公司都打垮了把很多银行都赶跑了到最后整个美国经济不管是企业家还是这个企业他们能够得到的资金的支持资本的
So we have seen the Occupy Wall Street protesting is uh, really getting bigger. And uh, as I speak to a couple of the protesters there, uh, they think there's a massive inequality within the U.S. Uh, society, especially in the uh, wealth distribution, yes. and they don't believe in American dreams right now. Nobody yeah. believes in American dreams, and right. the social immobility is very serious. So it is serious. I agree. Wh wh what's your take on that? I agree 100 percent. It's a huge problem. I'm surprised, actually, that this kind of protest didn't occur earlier. It was for many the same things, the feeling that all the power is concentrated in the hands of a few. And of course, we saw it in Tahrir Square in uh, Cairo, and, and it's really, this is becoming almost like a worldwide movement. Inequality is a serious problem that the rich ignore at their peril, because in, in the long run, the, the winners of society depend on a stable framework of government and police protection and so on. If there's a feeling, and, they, they benefit hugely from the countries that they live in, and so it's in their best interest to make sure that social harmony continues, even if that means making some concessions. Hmm. I think the fundamental, the, the, uh, the very advantage for the United States is this is a country that you, if you work hard, you can get what you want. This yeah. is an American dream. It's a, it's a land of miracles. It's yes. a, back to 100 years, it's the old tradition, but right. now it's all gone so I don't think it's all gone I mean that's the pessimistic take but you know Steve Jobs just died he, he died with uh, billions of dollars uh, uh, of wealth and he was a self-made person uh, you know you can go down the list of people who have succeeded enormously in the United States and even now there are kids who are coming out of high school and college with a big idea that's going to be the next, make them the next billionaire. So the dream can work in the U.S. The problem is, and this is what the protesters are complaining about, too few people are able to break through like that, and too many people are stuck in a rut. That's what we need to work on changing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. 然而，在我们听了这么多不同的声音以后，占领华尔街活动，我觉得我没有必要发表任何自己个人的观点了。在这里，我只想援引一位新浪网友的话。那么，这位网友说道 s t e v e n Jobs 的去世引起了数千万人甚至是上亿人的哀悼。”那么，这显示了人们所仇恨的并不是财富本身，那些通过个人努力、通过才华和创新所创造的财富，是被人们尊重并且是被人们喜爱的。人们所仇恨的只是那些通过贪婪、欺骗、官商勾结、剥削和压榨所创造的财富。好的，感谢您收看本周的《搜狗 trade 对话华尔街》，我们下周再见。